here today with one of the greatest champions of our time. I am so excited. Carl Lewis dominated the world of track and field for nearly two decades, capturing nine Olympic gold medals. And now that he's got the gold, he's pursuing the silver screen, that is, and much more. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Carl Lewis. <laughs> Everybody's feeling good early in the morning. You well, know. I'm happy because you're here. Well, good, okay. Yeah, I, I heard one guy drove two mu two hours to get here just to see you. Isn't that well, impressive? I like that. Okay. Isn't that neat? Yeah, that's real cool. Well, okay. you know, Carl, I used to be a track star myself in high school. Hurdles, <coughs> hurdles. I used to go under them, actually. Oh, <laughs> well, that's about where I go nowadays, too. <laughs> that's how you win is by going under them. <laughs> anyway, quicker. nine Olympic gold medals. Do you miss the adrenaline rush? of competing and, and just getting ready for the races? Um, fortunately, I was a person that made the right decision. You know, I was at a time when uh, I wanted to retire, I was ready to retire, and that came because I looked back on my career and felt that I couldn't have done anything else. It could not have been better for me. There so was nothing else for you to win, That Carl. was it, definitely, you know. <laughs> and so, no, I, I honestly don't miss it at all because I, I fulfilled everything way beyond what I could have ever imagined. You know, it's so tough because sometimes when you speak to athletes, they're so used to being in a certain routine and, and doing certain things, but you've moved on. You're interested in acting. You love to sing. Tell me about, about some of that. Well, um, actually, the acting thing had started in college for me. You know, I did, studied radio television, and then it evolved throughout my career. You know, I was, was not just the regular person running down the track, and so I've since moved to Los Angeles, and I'm studying out there with uh, AMG agency, and I'm focusing on acting. And, what and kind start of roles do you want to do? Dramatic uh, or well, comedy? I, or? Here, you know what? It's funny. I I want to do really the kind of the hard roles. I like uh, like what? But I, I like villainous roles. Oh, know, the mean roles. Kind of, yeah, I want to do like th those kind okay. of roles. It's um, it's, of course, it's totally different from my character as an athlete. No, <laughs> it, it, after years in, in sports, sometimes that's the easy role to play. You know. Right. But the, yeah, that, that's the kind of stuff. But I also love comedy. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about your athletic ability because you come from a family of athletes. Your mom, as a matter of fact, ran in the Pan American Games back in 1951. Did you feel any pressure? There's a picture of the two of you right there uh, from 1992, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. Barcelona Games. Did you feel pressure to be good? <laughs> well, it, it was funny in our family. I mean, everybody was involved in sports, but it was more so from an athletic side. I mean, people just, we, we love to work out. My parents had us involved in many different things. I mean, all different types of activities. And uh, it just so happened that we ended up in sports, and it was something that kept the family together. Now, you weren't so good, right, in, <laughs> at sports when you were younger. Is that true? Right. I, I was um, the late bloomer of the family, so we say. And um, growing up, you never would have thought that I would have been involved in sports and athletics. And it's kind of funny because I look back now and, and look at so many of my peers at the time that stopped competing, and who knows how they would have ended up. But fortunately, my parents supported me and I stayed involved in it and I was able to be successful. Was there something that made the difference for you in, in turning you from not so great to super fantastic? Well, first of all, a lot of support, a lot of um, parental support and family and friends. And then just sticking at it because I was a late bloomer um, in terms of just my physique. I, I grew quite a bit at the end of high school. I was small. Um, growing up from junior high and into high school. So, really? Because you're big. Yeah, I, it happened late. <laughs> and um, I, I was surprised, actually, when I saw you, because you were so much taller than I expected. Although people say that about me, too, <laughs> believe it or not, at 5'1". Well, yeah, well, it, it's funny, because most people that see me, they say, God, I thought you were like this and this, you know? And I said, yeah. no, I'm a little bit more of this and that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit more this and this when people see me, but... Uh, well, off-season, I did that, too, so don't, don't be afraid, though. Yeah. Um, now, you're in town to talk about the Boys and Girls Club, Madison Square Boys and Girls Club. Tell me how you got involved in that. Well, MasterCard has, um, MasterCard.com has an e-wallet. And actually, today, I'm going to go online and shop. I'm going to set a world record for shopping. And all these gifts. Can I gifts, come? No. Yeah, <laughs> all of these gifts. I know that was easy to get me to do that. <laughs> all these gifts and things go for the Boys and Girls Club. So it's exciting. I'm able to introduce this new product on MasterCard.com as well as raise money and do things for the Boys and Girls Club. So let me get this straight. Basically, you're going to run around at Olympic pace shopping. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's the fun part. I mean, I can shop and do it. I don't have to race. I don't have to run. No sweating involved. Oh, that's good. You know, we're in air conditioning, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the Boys and Girls Club benefit 100%, so mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. What message would you give? Because so many people look up to you in Boys and Girls and, 
and uh, you know, even adults, as a matter of fact, what message would you want to give from all your years of learning and training and just living life? I, to, to be honest, the, the one message that always comes out is never give up. I should have quit, you know, based on what people tell kids to do and, oh, you're not good enough. And, and I was always uh, told that when I was a kid. And I just kept at it, you know, really? for every different reasons, you know, mainly because I had support, not because I was good enough. Mm -hmm. But um, I always tell kids, never give up. You cannot determine your future unless you're a part of it. That's wonderful. And that's a wonderful place to end, isn't it? You can change.